saying, please don't rush into any inauguration. Let it be a carnival. Right now, it's, it, it, it's, it's the, the, the whole atmosphere is like a graveyard silence. There's no jubilation anywhere. We are, we are under tension. And now we are going to borrow another $800 million to do what? To share it at, at the tail end of this administration? I want to appeal to Mr. President, please stop it. Because you, you, you promised us that the, the, you, you will leave a very positive legacy. And that is the electoral process. That it will be second to none in the world. Look at the charade. You see, guys, there is a saying that every man has its price. Every man has its price. You know, some of this saying doesn't necessarily mean that it's applicable in all areas. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's applicable in all areas. There are some aspects of life that money is worthless. Now, the APC government, the APC, let me just say the Bodembola, the president-elect and the APC people tried their very best, their possible best. You know, they think that money can do everything. They have bought a lot of people to themselves, you know, bringing people from different political parties to join them, you know, using their technicalities, their formats, monetary formats to destabilize other political parties to, to themselves so that other political parties can lose guard, can lose power, and they can have the entire power to themselves. They tried this on the, the elder statesman, uh, uh, Chief Bo uh, Body George. You know, they tried, they visited him on several occasions, wanting him to come to their side, wanting him to defect from PDP. This is Elder Statesman. I'm going to release this video for you guys to watch in just a moment, to listen to this man, this Elder Statesman. These are the kind of men we are talking about in the society. This is an example of the men we are talking about that thinks about the future. The future of their generation, the future of their children, the future of their great-grandchildren to come. Because this man I'm talking about is over 80 years. What money do you want to give to him? What position is he looking for? You know, how much money does he want to spend? How, much, how many houses does he want to leave? How many cars does he want to drive in the time? Those are the kind of men that think in that direction. But some old men, even at 80, 90, they are still looking for what to eat up and down. I'm going to allow you to watch this video, to listen. When I listened to this, when I watched this man spoke, I was marveled, I was perplexed. Okay, so we still have elderly men. We still have elder statesmen that can talk like this, that can talk. They, they visited him one time. They reinforced and brought in elderly people with the hope that he's going to, you know, look at them and respect them and heed to their request. It's quite unfortunate. It's quite sad. And this man opened clearly to them to tell them straight to their faces that, you know what, I'm an elder statesman. <clears throat> I'm an inner caucus member of the PDP. I cannot defend. What do I want to tell my children? What do I want to tell my party? The case is still in the court, right? And you guys are coming to me, wanting me to defect and, 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 and throw my weight behind the president-elect or president-select, whatever it's called. Because all of us know that this particular election that was just concluded February 25 was a charade. Was a sh Absolutely. Even they wanted to rig, they didn't even know how to rig properly. If you want to do something, you need to learn how to do it properly. If you want to do cover some shades up, you need to cover it up. There's a saying in Yoruba that es okute sin, es eti yosita. You know? So when I watched this video, I took my time from the beginning to the end to listen to the video and I watched this man make a lot of sense from what he said. Because he believes that what else does he want to eat? Where does he want to go? How many houses does he want to live, sleep in? How many cars does he want to drive? How much money does he want to have in his account at over 80? Well, you see some men, some old men at 85, they are still, they are still dilly dally. They cannot talk straight. They are still scared. They still believe money can do a, a, a lot of things. It's quite unfortunate. You know, people should learn from this video that I'm going to allow you to watch. People should learn from it, especially the elders that are selling the future of their children, the future of their unborn children should learn from this particular video. You know, if you learn from this particular video, you will understand what it means. When people say that money uh, can buy everything, money cannot buy everything. And not every man has its price. There are people that will say no to certain things so long it is not just. So long, it is not righteous. Some people will say a lot to it. But some greedy people, 
You know how many people APC have bought to themselves with money? Because these people have the money. You know, your president elect or select has the money to spend. Even spending two, two billion per one person, he can do it in the country of Nigeria. So he believes in that. How dare you go to such a man to say, okay, you want him to develop? And this man said categorically that he is not going to congratulate him until the court decides. Even if the, the tribunal, if they, if they conclude and say, okay, this, there is still chance for the Supreme Court. It's quite shameful. The APC people should, should stop. And we know it's their game anyways. We know it's their game. But this man really made a lot of sense. That I want you guys, I'm going to release the video. Watch it to the end and leave your comments. I'll be speaking to you in the next video, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. And bye for now. Get to hear from you. Um, you made certain proclamations. And as an elder statesman and a very, very, and a man of your word and a Christian also, who always seeks to probably live by the words he actually puts out there. It's almost contradictory. Some would say that at one, at one point in time, you said, if this happens, this will be your reaction. But it seems that mm. events have overtaken that particular thought. And right now, you seem to be going back on your words. Talk to us about this. Now, let me, let me be very clear, because, you know, in this modern day, you have all kinds of uh, stories who fly around. And I want to thank you for giving me uh, a singular opportunity to put the record straight. Yes, I said it, and I meant what I said, that if peradventure he became the president of this country, I won't live here. I will be watching Nigeria with my long binoculars from afar. I, I, I didn't mean my words. But the issue now is, as the complete process being completed, the elections. Elections are not over. You know, there are disagreements between the major parties and the, the next level is to go to court for adjudication. So nobody can, okay, the uh, professor Yakubu pronounced Bola as the president and gave him certificate in the middle of the night. But my party and some other political parties are still in court. So it's not over. And when it's over, we will weigh the, the pluses, the minuses, and uh, come to a conclusion. But like you said during your introduction, uh, Papa Lucy, apart from being the leader of the, uh, the forum in their party, is like an elder brother to me in Lagos. And traditionally in Yoruba land, if an elder says he wants to come and see you to discuss certain points, you don't throw him away. You don't disrespect him. Because what you do to your elders, you think the younger ones coming behind you will do the same thing to you. Respect to elders is a, is a primus uh, inter pares in our own culture. So when I got the message that um, he sent a word to me that he would like to see me, I asked the, the, uh, my good friend uh, who told me, I said, ah, I hope there is no problem. Why would Papa want to come and see me? Let, me? let him tell me to come to his house. I'll go there. But he said it was political. I said, oh, political? OK, why not? So Papa came here. And he told me, you know, in, his, uh, in unclear terms, that, look, buddy, I came here for three issues. Yes, sir. First one, that time he came alone. And he asked the, my friend, Dr. Nino Adeniji, to be a witness. So the three of us sat in my office and said, he came here for three issues. The first one is to apologize to you because of what had happened to you, uh, which, you know, was through uh, uh, Bola. The second issue was that he, he wants us to establish a platform in Lagos where they are, they are, irrespective of your political affiliations, you know, 
you will be, will be able to discuss matters that will affect Lagos. So two, three heads, whether you are in their, their political party or not in their political party, you are a Lagosian that will positively impact Lagos will be a major issue. So that was how, that was the second item on the discussion. Then the last one was, he said, look, enough is enough. Uh, he would advise that I should go and pay my, uh, my congratulatory uh, visit to Bola Tinumbu. Ah, immediately, I said, Papa, you know, um, uh, let me start from where you stopped. I belong to an, another political party, and I'm an irredentist PDP man. Not only that, I am a life member of the board of trustee of the party, and the only one representing this, the, the Southwest in the national caucus of our party. Our party is in court with this gentleman. How would I, how, how do I explain to the party members? How do I explain to my children? How do I explain to my family members? How do I explain to my friends that I would jump the ship and go? I wasn't brought up that way, and I will not do it. So he said, okay, we will come back again, bring some more people. So on uh, Saturday or Sunday, this uh, last week, Papa came with uh, the retired justice, Olorunimbe, <laughs> you know, a 94-year-old man who is also like a big baba to me. Uh, and then there were two other former deputy governors from Lagos State. And they came and he repeated the same issues. On my side, I invited our elders too, Mrs. Sonike Poshudi. Uh, Senator Kufu Rola uh, Bokno, Akirele Bokno. Uh, we invited Aki, uh, Dr. Akitoye, uh, Dr. Andeniji, uh, and some others, you know, so that they will be participants <laughs> at the meeting. So they raised the same three issues. The first one to, to come and beg me. And I told Papa in unclear terms, that there is nothing personal between me and this gentleman. I have nothing personal. All I disagree with are his uh, uh, um, um, methodologies of governance, the, the, his, own, his, own, his own ways of managing the resources of the land for the benefit of the people. It's not impacting on the people. I am a thoroughbred Lagosian. I was born and bred and grew up here. There is so much degradation. Go to my local government. Uh, first of all, the, the um, uh, Femi Bajabi Amila had been here. We had discussions. I told him all the things I, I want them to do in Lagos. It, it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that let Lagos be like the best city in the world. Make life more meaningful. Impact on the minds of the people positively because the power rests with the people. But if there is nothing rather than that, the method of management, the financial management, completely despicable. So I said to them, I have no qualms. I have no objection. And as far as I'm concerned, there is nothing personal, sir. If whatever he had done to me in the past as a Christian, like you said, vengeance is the almighty God's. It's not mine. And I've already seen those who are the, the active players on, on, on the ill wind. They have suffered for it already in this life. You know, so for me, the last option, the last request was that we should, whether the court has finished or the court has not finished, or the processes are over or not, I should also join the others to go and congratulate uh, Bola Tinumbu, like uh, he said, uh, our group, 
um, Wiki and uh, Sheyi had done. I said, I'm not friends. I'm not Sheyi and I'm not uh, uh, Wiki. I'm much older than them. And uh, uh, that's their opinion. For me, if peradventure, at the end of the analysis, our party is still looking forward to winning at the court. So if I jump ship, how would I look like? Like a swine? Like a traitor? Ah, come on. I was born into a political family in these Lagos. You know, and respect for what is right, what is just, what is fair. That are the ways of my upbringing. Nothing personal. If they say he, uh, he's, he has won, and I said it, that it is for me to decide whether I will live under the control of this, and he cannot individually control me. I won't break the laws. And what we want is the rule of law. What is democracy? The government of the people, the rule of law. And when you go to every court in this country, you find the lady of means and the lady of justice blindfolded with a sword and a scale. And, and it dispense, she dispenses justice based on facts. So let's wait until the outcome of the uh, Supreme Court. For now, I don't agree. We're going to say congratulate him before I will never but the judge will never do that because that will be a sign of being a traitor. Number two, I will also be breaking the electoral process because it's until the court decides that you will now dis, 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 uh, uh, definitively conclude that elections are over. I hope my, my explanations are clear. I have nothing against him as a person. He offended well, me. That, that's that actually has very clear. Come and gone. I'm still alive. Well, that's actually very yes. clear. I can see you're very optimistic <laughs> about what the outcome of the election petition tribunal will be. But based on past events, what are the likely chances that his victory at the polls yes. will be overturned at the tribunal? That's the first part of my question. Then you said you allowed Paul Lucy and his team to visit because traditionally you have to respect your elders. But if you're insisting that you're still going to leave oh, the yeah. country... Wouldn't that also be, can't it be termed as also being disrespectful to their request traditionally? No, 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 don't get it wrong. Let me start from your last question. That is, I am getting close to 80 years. I can decide to do whatever I want. I don't subject my own, my, own, my, my biological father, my biological mother, they have gone. You know, so I am also the head of uh, the judge uh, family here in Lagos. So if I make any decision on my own, I will consult all of them. I can decide to be to go and live in on the on the North Pole or South Pole or anywhere or anywhere I want to live. I'm no longer a kid. You know, I want to live the rest of my life where I will be cushioned. I will be uh, in a civilized environment. Look, look, look at the squalor in my state now. We are telling them, establish skill acquisition programs in each local government. All these boys are doing a riser, a riser, with disturbing all the traffic people. That is not the Lagos of my own dream. I was born here. I grew up here. In those days, we used to have a, 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 a little, little stadia where we used to play, the elders who manage us, you know, you, you learned how to play <laughs> table tennis, you learned how to play uh, all kinds of games. So what is happening now? We lost it. And there is a state of helplessness and a state of hopelessness. Establish it. You know, what is Alpha Beta Company? Send them money to establish programs for these young minds. Otherwise, what are you projecting for the future? That's why I said, look, let, uh, we've been talking and talking. If they don't want to listen, I don't want to be part of that. I'm not running away because he's president. I want to go to anywhere where I will have the peace of my, my mind until God calls my flight. You know, Psalm 90, verse 10 in the Holy Book 
says three scores and ten. God guaranteed those years for you. And if you are strong enough, he will make you up to 80. So what am I still doing? But to keep thanking the almighty God and serve him and do things that will place me before him on the resurrection morning. The issue of the elders. I'm not disrespecting the elders by saying I will still not accept or go there to greet him, congratulate him. It, that, 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 I have looked at it. How would I look like? I told you I am a life member of the board of trustee of my political party. Number one. Number two, I am the one representing the Southwest in the uh, national caucus of my party. My party is still in court. We could win. I don't, I'm not a lawyer. You're asking me. I, I, you know, they tell us we are not learned. I'm not a lawyer. But we will follow the logic. Like they did in Oshu, we listen to the judgment. And so we will listen to the judgment by the Supreme Court eventually. And that's why we are saying, please don't rush into any inauguration. Let it be a carnival. Right now, it's, 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 the, the, the whole atmosphere is like a graveyard silence. There's no jubilation anywhere. We are, we are under tension. And now we are going to borrow another $800 million to do what? To share it at, at the tail end of this administration? I want to appeal to Mr. President, please stop it. Because you, you, you promised us that the, the, you, you will leave a very positive legacy. And that is the electoral process. That it will be second to none in the world. Look at the charade. I am a computer trained engineer. And I want to give an example. You know, on board the ship, you have a missile fired at your ship. The missile is flying towards you. All right? Now, you have your early warning radar, you have the systems, the, the, the weapons radar. So they will, the computer will compute and calculate the speed of that missile, the time of flight that it can reach and hit you. You know what we do? You will now say on that D day and H hour, there was a glitch in the computer. What are you talking about? You know what that means? All of you will die. So there is no system design that is not robust enough. If there is a glitch, it will immediately reroute to find a solution. So this story by the professor has no, no depth at all. No depth at all. But we wait for the judges. We will listen to their story. And any decision at the Supreme Court becomes a supra. I'm not a lawyer, but I know. They will now refer to those, you know, comments and judgments and all that for future purposes. Their children, children will read the judgment and clarify whether they were just or they were fair and they were equitable. If not, they will never be on the good pages of our history. That's all.